I'm a different kind of jig. I'm a different kind of jig. I'm a different kind of jig. What needs to happen in Cleveland now where all they know is turnover? I think they need to clean house. I think everybody needs to. And we're not going to do that. So and we can stop right there. I'm not doing that. You're not talking about it? You're not no, I'm not, we're not, I'm not going 1 in 15. No. The Cleveland Browns have cut ties with one of the faces of their franchise. On Wednesday, the Browns released veteran cornerback Joe Hayden after seven years in Cleveland. Now, Hayden was set to make $11 million this season, and after a request to take a pay cut was denied, the Browns said goodbye to Hayden, who now becomes a free agent. The 28-year-old was drafted in the first round by the Browns back in 2010 and totaled 19 interceptions over 90 games in Cleveland, but has dealt with injuries the past two seasons. Teams like the Steelers, Chiefs, and Saints are all reportedly interested in signing the two-time Pro Bowler. Thank you very much. With the 52nd pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Deshaun Kaiser, quarterback. No today. Go. She fires downfield on time. Touchdown. Notre Dame. Deshaun Kaiser, quarterback. 5,809 career pass yards. An absolute masterpiece by Kaiser. Brock Osweiler's stay in Cleveland will be short-lived. The Browns have released the quarterback, according to the Athletics' Zach Jackson. The team got Osweiler in March from the Texans, who traded the QB to rid themselves of his heavy contract. He signed a four-year, $72 million deal with Houston before last season, but struggled mightily and ended up losing his job to Tom Savage. The QB got such a rich deal based mostly on his impressive 2015 performance, filling in for the injured Peyton Manning in Denver. He went 5-2 with 10 touchdowns and 6 interceptions during that time. He entered camp in Cleveland as the Browns' number one QB, but was beaten out by rookie Deshaun Kaiser, who will start the season September 10th against the Steelers. Carson Wentz and Deshaun Watson were on the clock where the Cleveland Browns had an opportunity to get a franchise caliber quarterback. Think about that. Not once, but twice, you've had opportunities to get a franchise quarterback, and you've missed out on it. In L.A. against the Chargers. The Chargers, he's been up and down. Here's Kaiser under pressure, wrapped up and buried. Tyson Alu-Alu. Making the start today for Cam Hayward, big for Mike Tomlin. This was a little Cameron Hayward-esque on this. Inside stunt by Alu Alu, and they're expecting him schematically to be picked up in the backfield by Duke Johnson. And I don't really know if... Deshaun <laughs> Kaiser going to keep it and sneak for the touchdown. They need the 20 for a first down. Over the middle and intercepted. Tipped and then intercepted is Derek Kindred. Kindred on his way back into the 30-yard line. Now down to two. Got the playoff in time. Looking left, throwing on the slant. Did he get in? Penalty markers fly. I think it's, it's a, a touchdown. touchdown. It is. <laughs> Corey Coleman for two. Gonna hand it off and up the middle is Crowell. Last 20 seconds will wind down with no further action on the field other than the handshakes. Pittsburgh, the defending AFC North champs, 11 and 5 a year ago. They ring up another opening day. They have won eight consecutive regular season games and 30 and 5 against the Browns since the year 2000. We prepared well for this game. Um, got every look that we expected to get. Nothing too, you know, crazy on our part. 
Um, obviously, the communication is big and, and key, especially in, in the home situation. You got to be able to go out there and make sure that every play is executed the right way um, in terms of the way that you know, you're know you presenting it to your offense. And I think I did a pretty good job with that. You know, our offense line was up there holding up tight, and, and I'm holding the ball you know, a little too long at times. I got to make sure that uh, when the check down is possible, that you go out there and you get the check down. When you have the uh, ability as a quarterback to move with your legs a little bit to extend plays, uh, you tend to, to become a little complacent with things that are happening around you, and you want to try to step up and make things happen. But um, I think that I learned one of the biggest lessons I learned today was that when the ball's when there's an opportunity to get the ball to the running back in a check down, you got to put it in his hands because he goes and makes plays. I, thought, I think we saw that in the fourth quarter that even with the guy right behind Crow, he's going to be able to make a play with his feet. Our mission is to have a really good defense and have an offense that complements that um, with a run game that obviously comes first. And I think that we saw out there that our offensive line is out there working their butt off and they're doing a really good job with that. But now it's on me and on this offense to make sure that we do a little bit better of a job complementing our defense. Uh, and, and in order to do so, it's you know, limiting turnovers. Obviously, we have one out there today that changes the game uh, when we're driving. And then, you know, on top of that, it's on me to make sure I'm complimenting that, that offensive line by making sure that I'm not taking the sacks that I'm taking. You know, I, I don't know if there's just one sack out there that I could have avoided, um, you know, and that's by throwing the ball away in a red zone or escaping the pocket and getting out of there. Did you and Ben talk after the knows that is a dark, dark place to be is where Corey Coleman was living right there. Hearing from him, Deshaun Kaiser, like that is, pal to your point, palpable sadness. Yeah. I saw Jeff Schwartz, who was a tackle in the NFL for a number of years, tweeted yesterday. He said, I was a part of 2-14, and 14, and that was bad. I can't imagine what it's like with none of that joy in the season. Well, and again, they're just one game worse than that. What a catch by Weddle! Contract, he elected to come here to Baltimore. Second and goal. Kaiser, good protection over the middle, intercepted! Picked off by Lardarius Webb! Just found the fountain of youth at the age of 34. His third quarterback hit. It's third and five. Kaiser chased out again, throws, intercepted! Brandon Carr! And Carr goes down at the 35! Trying to solidify the position. First down, and it's intercepted! to take a shot up high. He'll send it deep. Intercepted Malik Hooker. Kaiser again from the shotgun on third and nine. Throws near side of the field. That pass deflected and intercepted. It's Clayton Fedulum. The Browns, they motion one of them. The sound, the throw is intercepted. Kendrick with the interception. Or rather, Marcus May with the interception for the Jets. From the Tennessee 28, Cleveland without timeouts. Kaiser delivers that pass and it's intercepted. Picked off by Kevin Byard. And disaster once again for Kaiser and Cleveland. Don't like that call. Former Super Bowl champion with New England. Kaiser on a bootleg pass and that pass is picked out of the air. Second interception for Kevin Byard. First and goal after the penalty from the five. Kaiser little fade pass back of the end zone. Slay, and it's intercepted. Start this drive at their own 45-yard line. Play action. Kaiser over the middle. Intercepted. Picked off by Telvin Smith. Down the sideline at the 40. He comes back there. He's trying to reverse field. And Smith is tackled at the... Kaiser intercepted by A.J. Boye. Much valuable time coming off the clock. Ricardo Lewis, the man who comes onto the field. Second and 13. That pass is intercepted. Picked off by Adrian Phillips. Can't spike it here. Kaiser again looks down the field. And he threw that one into traffic and it's intercepted. Got Josh Gordon one on one. Away from trips. There it is. Third and two. And now Kaiser in trouble. Is looking around. The ball is batted into the air. And it is. Third down at eight. 
Pressure's coming from Suggs. Kaiser breaks away and it's intercepted at the 42 yard line. Everybody. The valve is in motion on third down and five. Kaiser pumps to the right, rolls to the left, throws to the back of the end zone, intercepted. Brandon Carr in the back of the end zone, and that was a poor decision by Deshaun Kaiser. Sweet, really intelligent guy down inside. Ball is spotted on the 28-yard line as we head toward the two-minute warning. Kaiser going for it all. And 12 successful conversions on fourth down. Here comes Kwiatkowski, and the pass is intercepted by Callahan. Steelers find that ever elusive first win here in week 17. Kaiser hit on the throw, and that pass is intercepted. Sean Davis. Turner, but you're right. Coach Tomlin was pretty clear about the fact that Antonio Brown would have used it. Blocked into the end zone. Free ball. And picked up for the touchdown by Pittsburgh. Not the beginning that the Browns were hoping for. See the pressure coming right up the middle. Anthony Ciccolo. Ciccolo with the block and the ball spins and Ciccolo recovers it. See the rotation, the spin on the ball doesn't cause it to go out of the back of the end zone but stay in bounds. Not the start that the Browns were, were hoping for or anticipating. Three and out on offense and then getting the opening punt blocked. Receiver for Hugh Jackson. He was elevated off the practice squad yesterday. Suggs coming with pressure. Kaiser steps up. Now Kaiser on the run. Lost the football. Knocked out by Suggs and scooped up by Matthew Judon. Kaiser, plenty of time in the pocket. Five man rush. Nobody open down the field. When you're a great high school player and a great college player and you move into the pros as a rookie. You think that you can get it done physically at that same level. What you have to do, you have to succumb to that thought and say, okay, that clock goes off in my head. Get rid of the foot. Second and ten. Kaiser has time, steps up, and delivers. That's the foul. Ball is loose. Lions have it. Loss in the recovery. Wasn't touched. Loss in into the end zone. Michael, basically, moments ago, the Cleveland Browns fired their executive vice president, Sashi Brown, the man that headed their personal department the past two years. This is a big front office shakeup. The Browns will begin their search for their ninth general manager since the team returned to Cleveland in 1999. The Browns, of course, passed up Carson Wentz, mm -hmm. passed up Deshaun Watson, at the same time, Sashi Brown stockpiled extra picks. They have six extra draft picks in next year's draft. They also have a situation here where they've got almost $100 million in salary cap space next year. But in a week that the Giants started the shakeups, the Giants fired Ben McAdoo and Jerry Reese on Monday. The Cleveland Browns moments ago 
fired their executive vice president, Sashi Brown. Everybody remembers the analytics right. that were brought into Cleveland. They became famous for bringing the analytics. But the truth of the matter is now the front office is in transition yet again. So people wonder, is Paul D. Podesta included in this? And I would say, look, the first domino was Sashi Brown. The Browns have fired him. Now the new GM is going to want his own people in there. So you'd have to think that this move will extend beyond just Sashi Brown. They didn't just fire Sashi Brown. Mm -hmm. The changes are underway in Cleveland, which has been starving to build a winner for an awfully long time. Well, the Browns have had a very busy day. This morning they fired Sashi Brown, and tonight they've hired former Chiefs GM John Dorsey to become their next general manager. The Browns have gotten a lot of flack over the years for trading out of the picks that landed Carson Witts and Deshaun Watson. Last year, Dorsey's Chiefs traded up in the draft to select Patrick Mahomes. Got our two-time Super Bowl champ here with me, Brown. New Browns GM John Dorsey has high expectations for his new franchise. Dorsey went on ESPN Radio in Cleveland Thursday and said, I believe we have to be competitive in the AFC North, and my total objective going into the 18 season is to win the AFC North. Anything else to me is unacceptable. That's a bold statement for a team that has never won the AFC North and last won a division title in 1989 in the now defunct AFC Central. In fact, the Browns have finished in last place in the division 13 of the past 15 years and last made the playoffs in 2002. But Dorsey has a championship pedigree, being part of 19 playoff teams, 11 division titles, and two Super Bowl champions in his 26 years as a personnel executive.